came out to Stony Run this morning. I pray that the Lord will richly bless you. We've got some announcements and things that we want to cover. Um, we've got some volunteer opportunities that are upon us and uh, some other things that are going to be coming up. But if you feel like you could help us on Wednesday nights with uh, the nursery or with security or ushers or anything like that, you know, we, we need you. The whole body needs to work together, and we need you all to come and help support the ministry. So please uh, think about it, pray about it, and then uh, come and commit to all three of them because we need you. So um, continue. We're doing our Monday night prayers at 7 o'clock, so please continue to remember our Sunday night prayers. We're seeing some awesome things happen. We're seeing moves of God in people's lives, and we need to um, we need to join together as believers in prayer because, you know, um, that that's our communication with God. So if we're not praying on a regular basis or we're not gathering together with believers and exercising our faith, you know, God's not obligated to move upon the needs of our life and our situation. So please make plans for that. Um, continue to remember our Samaritan's Purse um, outreach that we're doing. There's there's more boxes. We've got a lot more boxes. Um, there's a card that says, you know, what you can, what you can, what you cannot put in. Um, there's certain toys and things they will not allow. Uh, and it's a $9 love offering to cover the postage. The 22nd is the deadline. So if you can take one of those boxes and be a blessing and pray over it before you turn it in. I'm sure they've prayed over Franklin Graham and, and their ministry. I'm sure they pray over them before they go, but, but say your prayer over it and bring that in, and it will richly bless a child. Now, we've got our uh, Women's Ministry Expo. That's going to be coming up on November the 14th, so please um, make plans to come out for that. I understand it's uh, booked up. Um, the time is from 9 o'clock to 2 o'clock, so please come out. I know if you're here for that, uh, you see lots of goodies and uh, that kind of thing, so they would appreciate your uh, dedication there and coming out. Now, December the 9th, we're doing our Contagious Christmas again uh, this December. I think it went really good. I saw some ugly sweaters and some, uh, that some things that were really blessings for people. Now, that was for the ugly sweater contest. I was not directing that to anybody else's sweater that they might have wore, so please don't don't take that in the wrong way. Um, but we're going to be doing the first uh, installment. It's going to be the ninth. It's going to be. It's all about the baby. So we need diapers, we need wipes, we need blankets, all that good stuff for babies because we're going to be taking that night and we're going to be putting those things together and praying over those things going out to families that need a blessing during that time. So please, as you're going along, we can start taking that stuff now. Pick up a, a box of diapers, a, a bag of diapers, wipes, whatever, and I know the Lord will richly bless you. I do want to make you aware of uh, a announcement that we found out about yesterday. Please remember uh, Miss Joyce Jones, Miss uh, Virginia Beasley's sister. Um, she's got COVID and she's not doing well. And we need to remember Miss uh, Virginia because she's sick and her test results won't be in until Monday. So please, when you when you have your prayer time, I mean, we're going to pray for them this morning, but when you have your prayer time, please remember these folks. And I know there's a lot of other needs and folks that need healing, that need deliverance and that kind of thing. But we serve a God that is able to meet those needs, whatever the situation may be. One last announcement that I overlooked, and I apologize. This is the first Sunday of the month, so if you're involved in the Secret Sister Circle, not going to go into any more detail because I don't know, but if you're involved in that, this is your reminder to do your obligation and be active in the month of November for your Secret Sister part. So let's, uh, if there's nothing else, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's all stand. Father God, Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy, dear God. Lord, we thank you that you've given us another opportunity to be able to be in your house today, oh God. Lord, we pray that your blessings would be upon us, Father. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would just have your way in this service, dear God. 
Lord, we pray that you would touch the hearts and minds of the people that are represented here. Lord, whatever may be weighing heavy on their minds, whatever struggles that they may be going through, Father God, help them, help me and help them to give those unto you, dear Jesus. Lord, you are our burden bearer, dear God. And Lord, we pray that you would touch our minds, dear God, as we focus in on this time that we would see you in a better way. Lord, we pray for Miss Virginia, dear God, and we pray for Miss Joyce, dear God. Lord, we pray that you would minister to those ladies right now, oh God, that you would touch their bodies, that you would restore their bodies, Father God. And Lord, we pray for all the other needs, dear God, people that are battling sickness and disease, that you would bring restoration to their bodies. Lord, we pray for the music as it's sung, dear God, that it would be done to bring praise and honor unto you, that we would do our best for you, dear Lord. And Lord, we pray that you would be with Pastor Joy as he brings the bread of life today, that you would bless him and strengthen him and use him for your glory and father we thank you for everything for another opportunity for us in the name of jesus we do pray amen good morning through you i can do anything i can do all things because it's you who gives me strength nothing is impossible through you Blind eyes are open, strongholds are broken, I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible. i 
praise the Lord. He arrested death. And we get to live forever. Hallelujah. of life's demand shameful sin placed on him the hope of every man oh the blood of Jesus washes me give God one more praise. Come on, guys. There's victory in Jesus. Can we celebrate that today and what God has done? He is truly amazing. I am not Rick Kelly, if you cannot tell. I know greatly. Um, I think I've got just a little bit more hair. 
just a little bit. And he's not here, so I can say that. Um, but he is watching probably. But guys, I, I think it's an honor to uh, be asked by Pastor Rick to come up here and preach to you. Because this, it is an honor to stand on this pulpit. Uh, we have a great shepherd here at Stony Run Church. Whether you like to admit it or not, he is awesome. He follows God's word, and that is not always approved by people. Because if we don't know, people are of the flesh, and they like to be sugar-coated. But God likes people who tell the truth, and he is the truth. We have a shepherd that does that, and I'm glad for that. Guys, I, I want to speak to you today. I, I prayed over this. I prayed, Lord God, I, I get to speak to adults and not the youth, not children. So I will feel more comfortable if some of you acted crazy, did something, asked weird questions, run around with your pants off. I don't know because that's what kids do. Uh, it would get me more in the mindset. Um, just kidding. Please don't do that, especially the pants part. Um, man, it, it's, it's, it's awesome. We live in a, in a volatile time, do we not? With, with COVID rampant, with, with elections right around the corner next week. Uh, it, it, it's a scary time. There's so much uh, civil unrest in people's hearts. Um, man, I, 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 wanted, I asked God, what can I do, God? What can I say? I want to give a word of encouragement. Um, I'm thinking, Lord God, I'm reading, uh, and God brought me to Ephesians. Um, probably one of the, I wouldn't say, well, one of the, one of the, greatest books that he made the gospel simple as it could be. Um, in the beginning, that first chapter, Paul starts off with a praise to God. And we wanna, I want to dive in that today as a word of encouragement for you, wherever you are at in your life. If, if, you, if you're putting too much trust in the next president or, or, or political office, please step away. Because too many people are glorifying them as gods. And they haven't changed anything yet. But what, what is coming true is what God said would happen in the last days. So I'm saying have faith in God and not in man today. Have faith in something that, is, that has never wavered, has never shaken, has never turned its, his back on you. And that is God. That is your encouragement. That is our encouragement because great nations have fallen. Great nations have fallen. Rome, the Greek Empire, all these great people have gone before us, have tried to follow man, and it's done nothing that's left us to death and destruction. Left us without hope. But God still reigns as a sovereign God. Nothing will change that. He will send his son Jesus back for a spotless bride. And I want you ready. Because my greatest thing that I learned from Pastor Rick... Listen, we worry. Secondary issues, if your bills get paid, what stresses you, how your marital, marital relationship is, what's going on in your life, those are secondary issues. But the greatest one thing, the, tertiary, the first thing, is that you are saved and redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what keeps us up at night. That's what keeps us coming back Sunday after Sunday. That's why Rick, Pastor Rick, spills out his heart to you because he wants you saved. He wants the story of the gospel taken out by you to others so they are saved. And it is a hard time to do that, is it not? Some of us are battling with physical ailments. The, the, the normal aging process of our body, it's falling apart. Some are diagnosed with a, a, a terminal disease. And we turn into God, what do I do? And some, are, some of us are asking God, what is even my purpose in life? This is a hard time. And I, I, and I can say I'm not, I'm, I'm not left out of it. I am burdened with these things as well. I get discouraged. I look and say, God, what is wrong with the church? Why are we not doing more? Why are we not giving more? Sacrificially, and I'm not talking about money, dear Lord. God has all the money he needs. He needs people to be the hands and feet. Yeah. Guys, and that's what worries me. And it, maybe it's because you're discouraged. Maybe you need some encouragement today. And I want to put that in you. I want to remind you what Paul's going to talk about in just a second when I read what God said and, and when he wrote this letter where he was at. So let's read the gospel. Let's read the word of God. And I want you to follow along. If you have your Bibles, please open up to Ephesians chapter 1. It's great. Guys, I really encourage you to bring your Bibles, bring a pen, make notes, even in your Bible, on paper or whatever. Because a lot of times you won't remember. And sometimes God will speak to you through his word. 
be open to it. Be ready at any moment because God could give you a revelation. And we're going to talk about God revealing himself to us as well. So in Ephesians chapter 1, we're going to read starting in verse 1 and we're going to verse 14. Paul, and I'm sorry, I might drop it. Sorry, uh, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by God's will to the faithful saints in Christ Jesus at Ephesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavens in Christ. For he's chosen us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in love before him. He predestined us to be adopted as sons and daughters through Jesus Christ for himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he lavished on us in the beloved one. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that, the, that he richly poured out on us with all wisdom and understanding. He has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he purposed in Christ, as a plan for the right time to bring everything together in Christ, both things in heaven and things on earth in him. In him we have also received an inheritance, because we were predestined according to the plan of the one who works out everything in agreement with the purpose of his will, so that he who had it already put on our hope in Christ might bring praise to his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and when you also believed, were sealed in him with the promised Holy Spirit. He is the down payment of our inheritance until the redemption of the possession to the praise of his glory. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you, God, for your word, Lord God. I pray, we all, I, I pray that we always put it first in everything that we do, Lord Jesus. We hold no idols before you, Lord God, that we want truth, Lord God, and we have discouraged, Lord, discouragement come upon us, Lord God, and we are down in depths in our depression and our despair that we turn to you for that encouragement to lift us up, Lord God, to put us back where we belong, Lord Jesus. I pray that over the people, Lord God, to walk out to, today and in their lives with their head held high, no matter where they're at in their life, Lord God. If they're facing physical death, Lord God. If they're facing uh, unemployment, Lord God. If they're facing divorce, Lord Jesus. That, Lord God, that you are still in control. And, Lord God, that the promise that you put in them through the Holy Spirit will not be taken away, Lord God, but whatever happens on earth. I pray that in our people. I pray that today. Open our hearts to receive your word. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And I'm sorry, I'll be drinking a lot of water today. Ever since I got my braces, I get so cotton mouth. So please forgive me. I'll try not to spit as my wife did on her video last night if you watched it on Facebook. So before I, since I brought it up, I will go ahead. We uh, did a party last night. My, my wife uh, does events and she's a... Uh, direct your day, sh a shameless plug on dot com. Anyway, guys, last night I had to decorate for a uh, 40th birthday party for friends we know. And they had, it was a dark barn and we were putting lights up. Well, Joey did really good on the first strand of lights. If you saw as Haley tried to tell. On the second strand of lights, Joey dropped them and busted several bulbs multiple times. Um, <laughs> I ended up buying that. So, um, Joey was kind of lazy and was kind of tired. He was trying to hurry up. He left them plugged up and was still trying to hang on. Now, listen, so you get context. 20-foot high ceilings, at least, if not more. It's a huge ladder that I'm climbing up. I'm scared of heights, okay? Know that. Um, moving it by myself. And I will talk about Halo. Halo's standing there watching me move this heavy ladder by myself, <laughs> sweating profusely. Um, anyway, I was tired by the second strand, so you can understand. It's my own fault. Um, <laughs> Lord help me. Uh, I did not unplug. I left the bulb busted in there. Come on, Joy, think. So I was up high on the metal frame of the garage door open, leaning on it, trying to throw the rafters. Um, and when I did, I threw the rafters. It came back, the busted the bulb part. Electricity, you know, conducts really good metal as I'm leaning on it. So I got a shock. Um, that woke me up, and I, at that point, I was frustrated. I got shot, and she said my 
teeth chattered. I was like shook. I knew I did something. I fed, it, went, it went through my elbow. All right. After that, I tried to take the bus above up, cut my thumb up, started bleeding all over the floor. It's crazy. You know, that was my night, okay? So, you know, I need some encouragement through today, and I'm glad I'm preaching this. Listen, guys, it, it's, it's really, I, my wife, she's going to laugh about it now. We have things in life, all right, that bring us down, do we not? Um, whatever it may be, uh, we, we go through, and that was a folly of joy. Um, if, you follow us, if you follow us anywhere, you'll know that we go through many of them. Um, it's just my life. Um, my dad's the same way. He cuts his arm. He hurts himself all the time. Um, so I, I'm following in great footsteps. So, Paul, I want you to get a context of why Paul wrote this, okay? Where Paul was at. He, he was tied to Ephesus, okay? He visited Ephesus several times during his ministry, uh, um, and, and he, he helped grow it to where it was at. But being ran out by the, by the majority of the, of the pagan god there, that they followed Diana or Artemis, where um, they ran him out because it was hurting their businesses. Because uh, it, when people start leaving those pagan gods, they stop buying the stuff that they need to, to worship that god, and that was putting a, a damper on them, so they ran Paul out. Well, Paul felt tied to this place. He wanted to continue to grow them. Listen, it's always important to grow in Christ. Once you get saved, once you're redeemed, once your sins are forgiven, that is not the end all. There's more to this beautiful life that God has given us. And God wants to reveal more of that day in and day out if you're willing to align yourself up in faith. That's important. That's, get, that's what helps us get us through the bad times. I want to read something. It, it's, um, and I, I'm trying to get your, your, your mind set into what Paul was doing. Paul was in prison. He was writing this, one of his first set of letters um, in, his, in his first time in the stints. Um, I, and if you want a title, I know I did give it to Miss Carrington, it's God's Plan. Now, I'm not draped, I'm not singing it, okay? But this is God's plan. Some of you will get that, some of you won't, and it's okay. It's a horrible song. Um, now listen. Um, this is a, a story of an old Navajo Indian who, who, who became rich because he had oil had been found on his property, okay? He took all his money and put it in a bank. His banker became very familiar with the habits of this old gentleman. Every once in a while, the Indian would show up at the bank and say to the banker, grass all gone, sheep all sick, water holes dry. The banker wouldn't say a word. He knew what, uh, what needed to be done. He'd bring the old man inside and sit him in the fall. There he'd bring out several bags of silver dollars and say, these are yours. The old man would spend about an hour in there looking at his money, stacking up the dollars and counting them. Then he'd come out and say, grass all green, sheep all well, water holes all full. He was simply, re simply reviewing his resources, and that's all. That's where, his encouragement, that's where he found his encouragement. When you look at the resources which are yours through Christ, Come on, guys. I, the resources that we're going to dive into, the salvation that Christ gives, the renewing of you, you're no longer your old self. You're something new in Christ. When you review what God has done for you through the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that should give encouragement to you in your tough time. I'm praying if it don't, you don't have the right relationship. Because I can think about where I was at, how dirty I was, unworthy of God's love, and I should be dead in hell. But he said, Joey, I choose you. That gives me encouragement. Because we'll go into a little bit, man. Because I don't know if any of you have been left aside by people who don't want you. People who threw you aside that are supposed to, be, supposed to love you. It hurts. This world full of, full of disappointment. Full of, full of people who don't care. But we have a father who does. And that's what Paul is telling the church of Ephesus. Hold on to that promise. Hold on to who God is through the tough times. Review your resources. We're going to talk about that, what that looks like. I want to give you this. The enemy doesn't mind if your body is free. He doesn't. Just as long as your mind stays stuck in wherever it's at. Paul was in prison, writing this. He was stuck, but his mind was free. 
I'd rather have a, a, a jail body and a free mind than a free body and a jail mind. Because we get caught by our doubts, by our fears, by things that we won't let go. Things that we hold on to. That the people who ever did them to us, they've forgotten. That person who did you wrong, who lied to you, who treated you like trash, they no longer care. But you're holding on to it seven years later. Why is that? You're stuck in something that God wants you to release to him. So let's dive into it. I, 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 verses 1 and 2 is his salutation, his greeting to them. And, and, he, and it's like Paul is just so excited. He spills out the gospel in the first two verses. I mean, he talks about apostle of Christ by God's will. What is God's will? What is God's will? His over will. I mean, really, it's to know him and to glorify his name in your life. But God's will, he shows us that he wants people saved. He wants you freed. In John 3, 17, it says, Jesus did not come to the world to condemn the world, but through him the world might be saved. So God's mindset is that for everyone, the world to be saved. Not just particular people, but everyone. That's his wish. That's what it's translated to. His will is his wishes. Sometimes we like to interpose our will in front of God's. That's dangerous. That will lead you down the wrong road. That, and you wonder why we're stuck in this. And we like to blame God. Well, God, I loved you. I, I repented. I've forgiven my sins. But yet you're following still your will and not God's will. You can't follow your will and find the happiness and be blessed as God wants you to be blessed in. If you're stuck, ask God, why am I stuck? In verse 2, he goes to grace to you and peace from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you. Now, this was something common with Paul. He always said, grace to you and peace from our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. What is grace? grace to you. It's unmerited favor through, through redemption of Jesus Christ. That's what grace really is. You getting something you don't deserve. God looking at you, you're not worthy of it and he says, you know what? I want you to have this. I want you to have this grace. And, 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 and guys, if you really want peace, you have to accept the grace first. You can't go to peace and not get the grace. And that grace, guys, is something that you have to give as well. That's where peace comes from. You hold on. Like I said, you're stuck on something that happened to you three or four years ago. You didn't forgive. You didn't let grace happen in your life, so there's no peace. No grace, no peace. You can stay in that jail cell of your mind and walk around faking it, faking it till you make it. Go ahead. You're fooling nobody but yourself. Because God sees your heart. God knows your inner workings. And that's who I'm only worried about. I'm not worried about what you think of me. I'm worried about what God thinks. Because he's the one that's going to judge me. He's the one I'm going to have to stand in front of one day. And he's going to ask, Joy, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you let go? I, gave, I told you I would carry your burdens. But we hold on. I like, and I'm sorry, I want to go back to this. I, I want to talk about this. All right, quick, in verse 1. Saints, saints. What does that word mean? We've really got a, a bad idea of what that word means. The Roman Catholic Church have ruined that word for us. They, they want to make it like it's somebody who, who's dead, someone who did great workings in their life, someone who lived to a certain degree, who did certain, um, certain things, Follow the law, legalism at its finest, to be called a saint, had to be canonized by the Pope. But that's not what the Bible refers to saints. He addresses saints as believers, those who trust in God. If you accepted Jesus Christ, if you have repented, you're a saint. He says this multiple times in the New Testament. He calls them saints. He never calls us sinners. Because you're no longer a sinner in Christ. Listen, if you want to hold on in that prison and your mind and still call yourself a sinner, 
go ahead, you'll be living there by yourself because God calls me who I am. And I am who he says I am. No longer what people see me as, but I'm a, I'm a saint in God. I can stand before him blameless and holy, not in front of people, because people, you see my faults, you see my tattoos, you see where I used to be. God doesn't see that. He says, I threw it in the sea of forgetfulness. It is gone forever. You are new in me. We need to live like it. You know why we're not completing stuff, why things are not getting done? Because we walk with our head down defeated all the time. And I know there's going to be bad days. I live them. I have them too. But look to Christ for your joy, to be blessed. This is a word of encouragement. I want you to leave here today knowing who you are in Christ. And he says you're great. You are greatly loved. And I have a purpose and a plan for you. And I want to reveal it in you. What are you willing to do to see Christ work in your life? Are you ready to let go of some things? You ready to throw them off to the side? Because he says you're never meant to carry them. You're never meant to hold these burdens. There's a lot to unpack in this chapter. There really is. So I, I want to challenge you because I'm, not, I'm only going to hit on some, certain things. I would like for you to go home and read this chapter. Read the whole book. It's only six chapters. Dear Lord, take a little time and you'll see what it is. Because he separates the plan of God and salvation in the first three chapters. And then the last three chapters, he says, what does it look like for us to live this out? To follow Christ. Listen, guys, there's a lot that we can receive. Know this in Christ if we're willing to walk this life. And I want you to walk it with me. I want to talk about the three things that he lays out that God the Father does for us, the Son, what he has done for us, and what the Holy Spirit is currently doing for us as believers Verses 3, start there. He says, Blessed is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavens in Christ. For he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless and love before him. He predestined us to be adopted as sons through Jesus Christ for himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, that he lavished on us in the beloved one. These, th these, these verses right here talks about what God the Father has done for you. The Father aspect. His role. He is the, he is the sower in, search, in, 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 in this, this, in, in what he does in our life. He is throwing out seed, Jesus Christ, to us. Listen to this. He gives us every spiritual blessing. A lot of times we like to think about the physical things. Uh, a, a lot of times we just dwell in the physical things that we can get from Christ. Well, God, are you going to pay my bills? Are you going to work this problem out in my life, God? Now, listen, God's not worried about that that much. He's worried about spiritually how you're doing. He cares about the, the fight that goes on in your mind. He, he cares about your salvation. Because you want to look at the spiritual, the spiritual blessing. It's not some cosmic power that you get that you can shoot lightning bolts out of your fingertips or nothing like that. But he's looking for your spiritual blessings. He's worried about the key benefits of a relationship with him through Christ. He's, he's chosen us by him before the foundation of the world, he says in verse 4. He's chosen you, do you understand, before the foundation, before he created earth, before the utterance of let there be heavens and earth. He chose you. He had you in mind. He says, I want something good for you. And this is the best possible earth he could have for us right now. It is riddled with sin, yes. We, sometimes we question who God is because things don't go the right way or why there's so much evil. But I look at these things and say there has to be a God that's going to judge us and hold us true to what His Word says. That's what I have hope in, that God's going to take care of the Adolf Hitlers. He's going to take care of the Joseph Stalins that killed 60, uh, hundreds of millions of people. The Russian people within the 21st century killed 60 million of their own people. I have to think there's going to be a God that's going to hold true and judge them for that. I also have to think that God's, there's going to be a God that's going to judge us as well as a nation for killing over 100 million babies that we do. God's going to hold true to that. It's frightening at times, I understand. But guys, 
God wants to give you an encouragement because he has given you something. He chose you. He chose those babies. He chose those people in Russia, those Jews that were killed at the Holocaust. He chose each and every person to follow him. Know that. Hold on to that. Because when we're not chosen by the ones we love, when we've been left aside, God chose you. True hurt comes from betrayal of a loved one. I, hope, I pray it never happens to you. I pray you don't feel that pain. Where you know someone's supposed to be in your life, supposed to love you, and they just don't. They say it with words, but they don't show it with action. And that hurts more than anything. I know that pain. It hurts tremendously. But I hold on to there's a Father in heaven who loves me, who chose me. That in my fault, when I was dead in sin, he goes on in Ephesians chapter 2, 5, says, dead in sins, but yet he chose us out of his love. He made this decision before sin, sin even entered the world. I get encouragement in that. I'm a dirty person. I know what, I know what my heart, my flesh goes after. I fight it daily. I know these things. But there's a God who says, Joey, I love you. Joey, hold on. St persevere. Stick through it. I will relieve you one day. Our adoption as, ch as his children is another thing that God our Father does. He adopts us into a family. He chooses you, then he adopts you. Listen, I grew up with a family who adopted kids. Man, there's a lot of baggage that comes with kids and their adoption. You don't know. They're not chosen by their own loved ones. They're given up. They carry that with them in everything they do. It's hard to let that go. It's a process sometimes, and I know that. When people do you wrong, when you're hurt deeply, it cuts to the core. It's baggage that we like to carry around. But Jesus, God, through his son, grants us full status as his children. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, As many as received him, to them gave he, gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Trust in God. Trust in who he is. And he says, you're a son and daughter of mine. I'll adopt you. And that leads to the third one. Accepted in the beloved. It's hard to walk around having a history with people. It's hard to reach your family because a lot of times they, they remember your history. They remember where you came from. They remember the things you used to do. You ain't changed, Joy. You're still the same person I mean, used to get drunk at a party. You used, used to get high in the bathroom. I know you. You haven't changed. You're preaching gospel now. You're preaching this Jesus. But to be accepted in the beloved. Remember that when I said earlier that Jesus has taken your sins, your blemishes, and he's thrown them in the sea of forgetfulness. He has wiped you clean. You're a new creation in him. He has, just, he has justified you. He has paid your debt through Jesus Christ, his son. And you're no longer that person. He said you're something new. You, I look at you and all I see is my loveliness. All I see is my righteousness that I gave to you. We need to live that, guys. We stay fighting the doubts in our mind and the hurt that we hold on to. We need to let it go and live in what God says who we are through the Father. Starting in verse 7, he says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he richly poured out on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he purposed in Christ as a plan for the right time to bring everything together in Christ, both things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have also received an inheritance because of who we were predestined according to the plan of the one who works out everything in agreement with the purpose of his will, so that we who had already put our hope in Christ might bring praise to his glory. Verses 7 through 12 goes through what the Son, Jesus Christ, has done for us. In his song of praise, he mentions God the Father and secondly, Son, Jesus Christ. Do you know what redemption is? What it means to be redeemed? Which means to be bought, 
that. Listen, born in this world, at a certain age, I believe there's a age of acknowledgement, age that we notice what right and wrong is. I believe that's when God starts holding us accountable for that. Okay? I believe that's what I, I was taught, and that's what I believe the scripture says, and I, I believe I will follow. We are condemned from that point on until we are saved in the world. We're part of the world. You wouldn't say, what, what, what could I ever do to sin? I mean, how many times I've lied and how easy it is to lie? How many times you've lied? Millions probably. I'm with you. Stolen something that wasn't yours. Piece of gum, pencil, maybe small in your eyes. But God just holds the line. Take something that's not yours. It's your thief. How many times have you said God's name in a defiant and unholy way? We hear it all the time, GD. Or even saying, oh my God. We, we, we say it in a name that's not honoring to him. We say it in a way that doesn't bring him glory. That's a sin. If you ask how I can sin, that, these are just three of the ten that God's going to judge us by, people. It's easy to do. We live in a culture and a world and a flesh that wants it. So we need to be bought back by something. We need something to pay that. This is a debt you will never, ever can pay by yourself. And I'm in debt. I don't understand that feeling. It's horrible when you owe somebody money. And you're working to pay it back. Think about something you know you did and you can never pay it back. That's frightening. But he reminds you, right here, Paul says, you've been redeemed. By Jesus Christ and by his blood. It was, a, it, was a, it was something you can never pay. A debt that you can never pay back. It was a penalty that you can never pay back to the great judge of God. Jesus freely did that. Out of his own love. For us. The price of our sins, guys, is the payment. Uh, and the payment to buy us out of, is, out of the eternal condemnation is free to us. But no, it, got, it cost God tremendously. It cost him a son. I was the one. Ain't nothing one of the things about the passion of Christ. I may not agree with everything Mel Gibson did, but when it came to when they nailed Jesus to the cross, I don't know if you ever heard of this, but it, it shows a close-up of Jesus' hand and the, just the hand of the person nailing his hand. I don't know if it's true or not. I just thought I read, but it would be kind of cool. He said, um, Mel Gibson said, I, I was the one that nailed Jesus' hands to the cross. He said, you didn't see me, but that was my hands who nailed Jesus' hands. He said, because I was that person. If you have sinned, you're that person. Because Jesus took your sin upon that cross. He took my sin upon that cross. Something he didn't have to do. Because I'm not worthy of it. In the grand scheme of things, I'll, be, I'll, I'll just be a youth pastor in Dunn, North Carolina. That's all I'll ever be. But God saw me before the world was ever created. He says, Joey... I'm going to take your sin upon a cross because I love you. And when it's hard, when you're going through hard times and you're thinking, God, I just want it to end. I pray for his coming. I pray for you to take me out of this world, whatever you can do. I have to remember that. 1 Corinthians 6.20 says, For you were bought back with a price to glorify God in your body. You're no longer yourself. You're, you don't own what God bought back. It's not a free trip once you've been saved to go do what you want to, but to, to go after God's will in your life. Second thing he's done is, is, this, is the other side of the coin of redemption is forgiveness of sins. It's not the same thing. Okay? Once your debt's been paid, once think about getting a, uh, a speeding ticket. Thank God I haven't gotten one for a very long time. And I pray I don't. But when you show up to court that day to pay it, if you go to court, you go stand up there from the judge. He calls your name. You say, Joel, you've been presented with speeding in a, uh, in, in a, a school zone. You got a $250 fine, the court cost. And he says, don't worry, it's been paid for. Okay, well, I've been redeemed by something. And then they say, you, you, this has been forgiven. You're gone. So it's one thing to be redeemed, to be bought back, but it's a second thing to be forgiven of what you did wrong. 
We don't hold a lot of weight in that. Do you know that that's something great that God has done for you? He has taken away your sins. You're blameless now. He's made you whole. He's made you clean. Because you're the bride he's going to come back for. Spotless bride. One that is great. One that is beautiful in his eyes. It's not a physical beauty. It's one that is holy and righteous. And that's what God calls us to be. No longer the one trapped in sin. No longer living the life that you once lived. You are something new, something different. You've been forgiven. We need to start living that life, Christian saints. You are something great in His eyes. There's no longer that burden around your neck holding you down. You can walk with it held, your head held high. In verses 8 through 10, he talks about knowing the mystery. He poured out all his wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he had purposed in Christ as a plan for the right time to bring everything together in Christ. God's plan. To me, I'm horrible with planning. So you know, I'm a progressive man. If you ever worked with me here, you know that just how I am. I don't know why. I wish I could change. I'll try to become more disciplined. I've gotten a little bit better somewhat with pushing. Sorry, Pat. Um, <clears throat> and that's fine. I need it. We need, we need criticism. Constructive criticism is good. It's like we've, even the church is so offended when somebody says something to you. Why are we, why are we, why do we get so hurt? It's like we get offended when God's word, when the preacher says something we don't agree with. Well, get over it. I mean, if it's God's word, he's not like when you stand for judgment, you're going to stand in front of God and, and try to talk back, back to God. Well, God, no, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that, God. That's not a hill of beans to him. Okay. You don't have to spend an eternity with God. You really don't. And there's some people who don't want to. And that's what amazes me. Some people don't want to spend an eternity with God. They don't want them on earth. You sure won't get them in your eternity either. And that to me is frightening. But he lets you know the mystery. Listen, guys, we try to do so much with knowledge. And listen, I, I, I want people to be smart. I want you to read your Bibles. Test what we say. You read it. Let God reveal through his word what he's trying to do for you. Because the plan for you is not the same plan for me. And if you want to know more in God, you want to know more about your life, then you need to line yourself up with God through his word and through prayer. Because this is how God speaks majority of times in his people. Back then, they didn't have a Bible they carried around. They had to go to the synagogue and they had scriptures they read from and that was it. And what, what they didn't memorize. We have something you can carry around on your phone and read. His, his will is right here. The mystery is in his word. And he's able to reveal it to you if you just take time to give sacrificially to God. You want to, you're discouraged? Read the word. Read, start with Psalms chapter 1. It talks about what to be is to be blessed, to be happy. You want to be happy? Read Psalms chapter 1. He tells us. He will reveal to you what it is to get these certain things. But we live in a place that don't want to read. We don't want to take time. And we think we're just going to get by the skin of your teeth. Guys, that is the wrong mindset to have with a God. That's going to bring judgment. You, I, I want to be sure. And I am sure with his, with, in faith. But I'm going to stay close to him as, as possible. Whatever it takes. Because eternity is a long time to be in heaven or in hell. And I want to be in heaven. I want to be in the glory of God as a new creation, a new body. No more pain. No more hurting. No more prisons within my mind. No more doubts. No more, you don't even know what pain feels like. It's, it's unbelievable to us because we live in a world of, uh, we don't even know what depression is no more because it won't be even there. None of that. We have a God that wants to reveal this to you. He wants everything to align, not just in heaven, but on earth. And that's amazing to me. He wants to, he wants to get you right here. He wants to come to you where, oh, I'm sorry, where you're at. My cheek got caught in my braces.
guys. The mystery he speaks of is that which is secret and could not be only known through revelation, not through your own finding out. But God will reveal himself to you if you trust, if you believe. I'm going to get ready to start closing now. If we can have our band back up. Go start with verse 13 and verse 14. It says, In him you also, when you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, and you also believe, you were sealed in him with the promised Holy Spirit. He is the down payment of our inheritance until the redemption of the possession to the praise of his glory. This third part is how the Holy Spirit works. And he's singing praises to God for his spirit that came on the day of Pentecost. It's the helper that Jesus told his disciples had to come so he could, he had to leave so he could come. That helper, when you accepted Christ, when you believed and repented, came to live inside of you, to, to, to create something new in you, to seal you as God's forever. Listen. To know a God, to be a father to me, to be a savior to me, and then to dwell with me. There's no better love or encouragement to that. And Paul points out, and this is just something interesting, interesting to me, and he says, he's in him you also. His pronouns changed in this part. He differentiates between the Jew and Gentile. The pronoun you, right there. Earlier he was saying we. We, the Jew. See, Christ came first for the Jew. Second for the Gentile. Us. Non-Jewish people. Christ provided all of us a helper to come. And he revealed that through his son Jesus Christ and to Paul right here to, to show us that he's the Holy One who seals us forever. This claim is given to us as, a, as our down payment for our heavenly inheritance. That inheritance is heaven, guys. That, he, that inheritance is not something you'll see here, may never see here. You may not see anything. You may not have a luxurious car, a beautiful home, all the money in your banking account. But I promise you one thing, that God is preparing something for us that no ear has ever heard or eye has ever seen in heaven for those who believe. So I don't know where you're at today. If I can get everyone to stand, I don't know where you're at in your walk. If you, if you don't know Jesus Christ, if you don't know him as a savior, if you don't know him as a father, I beg to you, to think about it and to accept Him as your Lord and Savior. To repent, to turn away from your sins because that's how salvation, He'll give you that spiritual blessing of salvation. He gives you the power to stand and walk out of here knowing that you've been saved. When the battle comes and it, you will be attacked as a Christian, that you can stand on not your own strength, but His. Or maybe you're a Christian and you're just discouraged about how everything's playing out in this country. You know, and, and, and how, it, it, how it may turn out if somebody gets in or if, it's, if the other person stays in. They are not my God. And as I know, this country is not listed in the end of times. This nation is not. So I, the United States can fold. It can buckle. It can be destroyed. But my God never will. And that's encouragement to you. We always want an easy life. We want the right person to be in there so we can have things our way. But it has made us to be soft Christians. It has made us to be non-repentant Christians. Let us not to want to go out and spread the gospel. I pray, God, my your will to be done on this earth. You do whatever you have to to get more people saved, Christ. Even if it brings in someone that's going to change everything to something we don't like. I don't have faith in them. I have faith in God. And I pray you do the same. Because if you put your faith in them, you will surely be dead in hell. Have faith in who God is. 
and what he can do. If you're more of a Christian, more than, more than a Republican, more than a Democrat, if you're more of a Christian, people would come and see the truth of who he is in you. But no, we want to push a political party. You push a political party, and it's going to, you're going to find failure. You're going to find disappointment. If you would proclaim and be the light that God calls us to be, be the salt, you'd get more people to change. They would follow Christ and who he is and his truth instead of pushing up an agenda of man. I pray that you vote. But I pray that you look to God to lead you who to vote for and to vote for godly things. And don't hold them above God. Because election day is coming up. And God's going to put who he wants in there, no matter what I choose. And I'm going to trust in him. I'm not going to be upset if the person I want doesn't win. I'm going to trust in God. Because he has shown me that he's delivered time and time and time again. I can hold strong in my faith because who he says I am. Dear Lord Jesus, we just come to you today, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that if people need prayer, Lord Jesus, they can come here. I worship, Lord Jesus, and we'll pray. Uh, Lord God, we'll, we'll, we'll direct them to Christ. Lord God, who, whatever is going on in people's hearts, Lord God, I know you're tugging. I know you're working. Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord God, as we leave out here today, Lord Jesus, that we hold you high in the position you're supposed to be in our lives. And Lord God, remember what you said through this song of by Paul. What the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit has done and continue to do in our lives. And that should give us encouragement to face the tough times. When we're in prison, Lord God, if it's in our minds or physically, Lord Jesus, and what bears us down, Lord God, that we don't feel like we can even take a breath, Lord God, that you say we're saved. You say we're then set free. And Lord God, I want to walk as a free man today because of what you did on the cross on Calvary. Through your blood, redeem me, forgive me of my sins, Lord Jesus. And you set upon me your Holy Spirit as a seal, Lord God, and to show me that I am an inheritance will be given to me, Lord Jesus. I pray that in the people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.